All right, this is the second entry on uh, my little review show. I'm joined by uh, Jordan Castro. Hello. One of my uh, good friends, and uh, this episode he wanted to watch The Dark Knight Rises. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And um, so just in general, how do you feel about like the Dark Knight movies? I personally love the... I don't really care as much for, and we were talking about this earlier, I don't really care as much for Batman Begins, because it's still a good movie, I just don't really, I feel like there's much more with The Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises that I, there's just just more there, that instead of it just being like a normal comic book movie, there's more character and more story and more just, since Christopher Nolan put his own take on it, there's just more content there, and I, I prefer to either watch like The Dark Knight or Dark Knight Rises over Batman Begins any day of the week, because... I just I enjoy them way more than Batman Begins. And I know a lot of people that like think the Batman Begins is the best one mm. out of all of them. Uh, I personally like I don't watch it ever, as I told you. I like watch the other two like twice, like like once every couple months. But Batman Begins never. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'll, they're both great. Batman Begins is great. Dark Knight is like the best superhero movie like of all time, and um, this one came out four years after the Dark Knight. Remember. And, um, yeah, what about older Batman, like Tim Burton, Batman? I, I kind of have, I haven't watched those movies in years, but I, I watched them a lot growing up, like the Michael Keaton Batman and just all those. And I kind of have, like, nostalgia kind of makes me like them, even though yeah. they might not be the greatest films. And I know that they're not because there's Batman mm-hmm. and Robin and, like, all those stuff. And, like, Val Kilmer's Batman was, I didn't like at all. I actually did. I actually liked Val Kilmer. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't, I, I just didn't buy it. He was still kind of, like, flat. Yeah, but like I said, I haven't seen them in years. But I, I, there was a lot of nostalgia for it. But I feel like nowadays, with um, how films are, that a film like that wouldn't work for society. Like I, if I went and saw a Tim Burton esque movie in twenty seventeen, I wouldn't, I wouldn't enjoy it because it's it's just not for the time. Yeah, I'm biased. I like love Batman Forever. Like I love Jim Carrey growing up. So like just seeing Jim Carrey be a goof. Yeah. And that whole movie is great. And I do like Val Kilmer. And uh, also, what was it? The original Batman's great, uh, Jack Nicholson. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. The, and, like, I think Michael Keaton's good. I don't get, like, I grew up with, like, the Christian Bale Batman, so that's my Batman. Mm. You know, people are like, oh, the yeah, real Michael Batman's Keaton. Michael Keaton. I, he's, oh, he's all right. I just, since, like you said, we grew up with um, Christian Bale as Batman, and that's the, that's the Batman. So it's just, it's rough seeing anyone else. And, yeah. and other people, older people, were like, "Oh yeah, Michael Keaton's the, the like the best Batman." I said, "Ah, okay, I don't know." Yeah, and then yeah, George Clooney. No one, no, was, nobody no, wants, no to, one talk wants to talk about George Clooney. I don't want to talk about George Clooney. Yeah, Batman and Robin's kind of bad. Uh, what about? Okay, this is directed by Christopher Nolan. Uh, just what do you think about Christopher Nolan? I pre two thousand twelve. Okay, I didn't really. I wasn't into film as much as I am now. Mm-hmm. So when his movies came out, I kind of just chalked them up to being, oh, they're confusing. Like Inception, I didn't understand it first when I first saw it. And I was like, oh, it's just a confusing movie. Like it, I, I thought I, it was stupid because I didn't understand it. But as I grew up and as I started watching more movies and understanding like his, his kind of take, I grew to appreciate Inception and The Prestige, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, films like that. And I started to appreciate even more. And I, I just, I love Christopher Nolan. He's become one of my favorite directors. Like, whenever there's a Christopher Nolan movie, even though, like, I know we've talked about this where Dunkirk was kind of, like, a bit disappointing. Oh, yeah, if you've seen, du- like, yeah. <laughs> Dunkirk, I don't like Dunkirk. <laughs> it's just, I, I feel like with Christopher Nolan, Interstellar is also one of my favorite movies of all time. And I know you don't really like it as I, much. I like it. It's grown on me every time I've watched yeah. it. Yeah. I, from the minute I saw it, I knew that was one of my favorite movies. And it's, it's just, with... I like that he's branching out and doing more genres. It's just I prefer him sticking to the sci-fi, to the psychological kind of thriller kind of thing. So I was a little disappointed with Dunkirk, but um, I still thought it was a great movie. I loved it. And I just, I love Christopher Nolan. He's honestly one of the better directors of the years. So. Uh, Dark Knight and Inception are two of my favorite movies of all time. Mm. Uh, like I'd put it up there in my, they're both definitely in my top ten. Uh, I like Memento. I think Memento is great. Yeah, I saw that recently for the first time. Oh, really? Which is really good. Yeah, uh, Prestige is is good, but I didn't really get that, so I've I've only seen it once. Mm-hmm. Um, haven't seen Insomnia. I've um, seen it was it was it was good. 
It's just not, there's yeah. not much there, like I said. And what else? I don't even know what else, like, am I missing something? I know he did, there's this movie in the 90s he did called The Following. Yeah, the Following, I never like saw 15 that. minutes along. Yeah, didn't see that. He did Insomnia, uh, Memento, Batman Begins, The Prestige. I yeah, like actually, yeah, I think yeah, I think that's it. I think that might be it, and then that's where he, Dark Knight, and then Inception. And then he took a break, did Inception, and then, the, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, um, so The Dark Knight Rises... Overall, just thoughts. I, fresh off, like, last night I watched The Dark Knight, so I just kind of like to get a refresher because I haven't seen The Dark Knight. I hadn't gotten a chance to study it as I have. Like, yesterday I I was really trying to pay attention and stuff, and then I watched The Dark Knight Rises where I hadn't, again, been able to study it in a long time. So I watched it, and it was more of, for me, I just, I love that the continuation of the story from The Dark Knight and having... It, I feel like Dark Knight Rises touched on the stuff that the the Joker had, you know, laid in motion without mentioning flat out the Joker because of Heath Ledger, may he rest in peace. But um, and I just, I love that the, there was this one scene in the Dark Knight where I can't remember what he said, but the Joker was talking with um, Batman is when they were interrogating him. Mm. And he's talking about how uh, people will eventually cast Batman out and then they'll just rip each other apart. And that was the whole point of Bane's plan was to balance everything out so that people can tear them, like, kind of just tear themselves apart. And I I feel like that's just brilliant that in 2008, I feel like with um, the passing of the of Heath Ledger, he had to, Christopher Nolan definitely had to rework The Dark Knight Rises, and you can tell. Oh, yeah. But um, I feel like it was, he had, he laid enough groundwork so this is not far off from where he wanted things to go. If the Joker had a bigger role, it wouldn't have mattered because Bane was like the 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 main part of that of the Dark Knight Rises. The only part that bothered me about it is like, well, it not bothered me, but like when they were breaking everyone out of the Black Gate, the prison, mm-hmm. I just kind of wanted like a behind the head shot of just someone with like green hair, you know? Yeah. Like as they're opening up a gate, maybe you know that would have been cool, but like I get why they didn't do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I remember uh, when I watched these. Uh, I got into the game late. Uh, I watched Batman Begins and Dark Knight back to back at home, and mm. then the next day I watched The Dark Knight Rises. And I feel like the problem because this isn't like a well liked movie. It, like it's it's liked. People just don't. People say it's overrated. Yeah, yeah. I I, I disagree. I really enjoy it a lot, and I feel that um, it gets a lot of hate because it's not what people would have wanted from the uh, the third installment. But it's you couldn't. I understand the respect that Christopher Nolan had that he didn't want to bring up the Joker and, you know, stuff like that, which is completely, that's what I would have done if I had that. I would have just, out of respect for Heath Ledger, I would have just left that and then created something completely new. But it's still in line with, um, like, the whole Ra's al Ghul thing that's from the first movie, so it's calling yeah. back and it's tying up the loose ends throughout the, the whole the trilogy, so I just... I kind of feel like it gets a lot of hate but it's not really necessary well, i feel like the problem was is the four-year gap like the greatest movie of all time comes out and then after that it's followed up by one of the greatest like sci-fi movies like inception mm. like was uh, groundbreaking and then they come out with this movie and i feel like people were just kind of like disappointed because like well like i had one day to think about oh what will the next movie be everyone else had like four, four years, years to sit yeah. here and be like well, well what are they gonna do you know so um obviously like people would be disappointed but i love it i think i think it's fantastic yeah. i think it's like it's cheesy a little bit you know like it's very sentimental um but i think it's a perfect way to cap off the trilogy mm-hmm. you know i i don't can't see any other way that they would oh yeah this is spoilers too so like if you haven't seen the dark knight rises oh, yeah, we're we're going to talk about spoilers <laughs> here um all right so what do you think about like the cast the cast is good i kind of i Mostly like returning people. Returning people. It's great. I love Michael Caine. Michael Caine's great. He's, he's great. He's great. Um, there's Morgan not, Freeman's great. Morgan Freeman's great. Uh, what is it? Commissioner Gordon is like the Gary backbone yeah, of the entire trilogy. Yeah. I um, At first I was really hesitant to like Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. Yeah, yeah. But after seeing the movie and seeing what she had done with the character, I kind of... It, it worked for... for um, her character and for that film. So it's not like Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman or anything else. Oh, yeah. And still Michelle Pfeiffer's up top. Yeah. Um, but, like, I thought she was great, though. That She did Les Mis in the same year. Yeah. That was a great year for her. Mm. And just, oh, I, I really liked her a lot. Mm. I, I it, it made me 
it kind of cemented because I the way I saw Anne Hathaway before this was like a the rom com, kind of like Anne Hathaway. Princess Diaries. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't take it as seriously when she was coming in as Catwoman. But after seeing that and then seeing movies like Les Mis, which I thought was... Uh, I, I didn't, didn't see Les Mis. It's, yeah, don't watch it. Um, <laughs> oh, well, I like musicals. I'd love it. Oh, so you, you probably love it. I didn't... It, that's, another, that's another review. But um, <laughs> her f- role in this film was great. And then she did Interstellar, which she, she plays tragic. I, I don't like her in Interstellar, you don't? actually. Well, because she's the whole... The whole plot point of, like, love transcends dimensions yeah, is her. That's so true. So I don't like that. Yeah, I I, like I, I, that's one of the things that I do like is because, like, her... She plays tragic. And I think one of the things that Christopher Nolan gets right... So right is the tragic female character. Like, in Interstellar was Murph and... Yeah. Um, what's her name brand so i just think like he gets that character so right and that's mm-hmm. i love each and each film it's just it's great and in this one it was um talia al ghul again spoilers but um it was talia yeah. and talia. catwoman so i just i loved it oh yeah with all the we noticed like a bunch of like the little hints throughout like this, oh yeah, like, yeah not only just like the scar but just like the evil stuff she'd say like throughout the movie even and, as miranda tate when she's masquerading around as the Save the World Vanity Project lady. She's just she just drops little th- little subtle hints that she's still that she has um, like a history with hating Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Because of you know, oh, Ra's al Ghul yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And Christian Bale, um, like so he's your Batman, right? Yeah, he's my Batman. Uh, sure. Like, what do you think about Ben Affleck's Batman? Real quick. He works in that universe. I feel. Yeah. And I like him a lot because I like Ben Affleck a lot, and I think as a different take on the character that was needed he's he's more than sufficient for that role like mm-hmm. I, I really do enjoy watching Batman v Superman solely because of him and I, I don't like the part that you know he kills and all oh yeah that's all that's, well, it's, <laughs> that's a whole nother video but it's just I appreciate both iterations yeah. I just prefer do you think he's the best Bruce Wayne and Batman out of anybody ah uh, that's tough I feel like he's really good as Bruce Wayne, but sometimes he kind of breaks character and becomes like more of like like an arrogant, which is I guess that that is Bruce Wayne. It's just sometimes it's oh yeah, bit, like overly arrogant. Yeah, yeah. Like that one scene in Batman v Superman where he's um he's tapping into Lex Luthor's uh, the thing. Yeah. And then the lady comes down and like breaks in. and He's like, oh, I like those shoes or whatever. Yeah. I feel like that's just too, like he's trying too hard. Yeah. But I do appreciate it. And Christian Bale, I, he's, he's my Batman, you know? One thing I like about Christian Bale, and I wrote this on here, is that, like, these movies are, like, they're serious. Like, these are known as, like, the dark and gritty, like, Batman movies. And every other, like, series, like, tries to copy this. Mm. And, um, but, like, these are funny movies. Yeah, there's, ser- there's yeah. a lot. It's, it kind of breaks the, um, the tension, because they they're tense movies, too. And, like, the, the little humor that's in there is a bit of, offers a bit of levity. Which I enjoy. It's just well for a three hour, yeah, three yeah, hour. Like it gets kind of dry movie. at some points, but I do, I do I thoroughly enjoy because there's just so much there to like unpack. And it's smart humor, like Batman v Superman with Batman. I hate, I hate how he's trying to be funny. Like an issue with you? Yeah. Like I no, I don't like that. But like this one, he's like I, I don't know. He's he's it's it's better. It's more subtle. You know, I I just I love Christian Bale as Batman mm. and like the voice. How does the voice bother you? Sometimes it does get a little bit ridiculous, yeah. but um, I guess that's it's just it just makes sense. And I like how in Batman v Superman they had like an actual voice changer that would morph that was, his voice. Yeah. I did I liked that a lot, which it kind of was. I feel like that was a little bit of a nod to changing how Christian yeah. Bale changed his voice, but I thought it, it worked. And um, the voice does get a little bit ridiculous, but it's just it's that's that's yeah Batman. I, I, I like it that and it's like very impressionable like everyone can do the Batman voice yeah and everyone does it and pokes fun at it but it's just it's it's great yeah and like I don't know I like it and then um so what else uh, oh yeah so uh, Bane go ahead and give me your uh, thoughts on Bane I uh, I again I was studying the Dark Knight and how um Gordon has a line in early I think it was early on in the film. In the Dark Knight Rises, where um, he's in the hospital and he's talking with Bruce, and um, he's talking with Bruce, and he's talking about how Bane has risen from the um, what's it? Ah, oh, I'm trying to find it. He he's come out of like the the whole lie with Harvey Dent. How yeah, he, they've cleaned up the streets and how there's not a lot of crime, but out of that, Bane has come out because the Bane's whole ideology is that the corrupt the corruption of Gotham and the decadence has 
really changed the way that the the, the people interact. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to level that out, and that was like I said earlier, the the Joker's whole thing about people ripping themselves apart is that when you take all that away and you cast out the one the symbol of hope, which was Batman up until mm-hmm. this point, that they start to really lose who they are. And I just I really I love I love Bane. With the lie uh, thing part, I feel like it's one of those um, short term solution to a uh, long term problem. problem. Yeah. So like uh, I like that though because uh, like the Dark Knight's gr- like the ending you could end the series off there and that's totally fine mm-hmm. you know but um I like how they utilize that here um, not much Batman in these movies yeah at all like mm-hmm. there, there's three sequences with Batman. And he's not in there much, but like the, they're about Batman, you know. Mm-hmm. Like the movie's about Batman, but like he's not he's not in it a whole lot. Mm. But yeah, Bane. Uh, back to Bane. I love, I love, love, love Bane, especially with like, I uh, like a lot of people think I'm a Marvel fanboy, and because mm. I just I love all the Marvel movies, and I hate I hate DC. <laughs> like I, okay, I love DC characters. Like Superman, I love Superman. Batman, oh, they're all great. Aquaman's dumb, uh, but yeah, so. And I love these Dark Knight movies, but everything they've done after the Dark Knight is aw- or Dark Knight Rises is awful. Yeah. So, but yeah, everyone calls me Marvel fanboy, but Marvel movies have the worst villains. Like out of they don't movies get, just don't get it. Yeah, because they're the thing with I feel like um, the Dark Knight trilogy instead of it's a realistic approach to what if superheroes really did exist and there's it's it's real and then there are real threats there's no like over the top villains where it's the end of the world like with the x-men movies it's always with i had huge problems with x-men apocalypse because of the, oh, whole, the villain is awful. the whole end of the world like i hate i hate that because it, it, it takes me out of the movie because that's not something that could happen and that's why i go to the movies to see stuff that like could happen but isn't happening yeah so and i feel that with each villain in the each film in the Dark Knight trilogy, it's more realistic and believable, and that's why they get villains right, because they, they lay, like, the whole thing with the Joker, like I've, I've talked about, they lay the groundwork in other films, and then they build on that throughout the, the entire the entirety of the film. And, that, like, with a villain, I want a villain that I understand. Not only do I understand him, but I care about him, and, like, some, not, like not rooting against him, not, not rooting for him, but, like, you know, like, kind of, mm-hmm. like, ca- caring about him, you know, in general. And just, like, someone that I remember, someone that's, like, quotable. Bane's the most quotable villain we've had, like, in the longest time. I love Bane. Like, I quote Bane all the time. I don't know. Because he's just... And he's just intimidating. He's, he's, and I uh, love to hate him. Ever since that, the first... His first scene where he... The, the cop or the, whoever he is yeah, takes, off the, takes hood, off the hood. And he gives that look to Dr. Pavel. It's... it's that's you believe that he is intimidating. He is a force to be, like, reckoned with. Oh, yeah. And oh, I... My it's, it's great. And I... What about his voice? Do you, does that bother you? No, I think it works. I the fire rises. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little silly sometimes, but it's it's different. It's not you know because in the comics Bane is a, a wrestler and yeah. So I feel like that that obviously wouldn't work in the, oh, no in the world of the no Dark way. Knight. So to have like a different kind of and his origin is still shifty. So you don't know like where he's from, what he's about. That's, yeah, that's part of the twist. That's so. the whole yeah. It's the whole thing, and I feel like that it just. It works for the for the film. Oh yeah, and uh, I mean he's not better than the Joker. He tops the Joker in a lot of ways. Like he's stronger. Yeah. And he, like I think he he doesn't mess with Batman as much. Like he's not in his head as much. I don't mm. think. But like I don't like how they finish him off at the end. Like it's there? not it's not the the ending that he deserves because it's it, he's such like a, a like a great villain. It's just he gets kind of like the one off, and they're like, oh okay, let's just finish what we're here to do. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so um, Bane's great. All right, so I have, I think, oh, uh, Ro- Robin, John Blake. Uh, yeah. How about him? I, I really like. It's just the conflicting things with him because they're throughout the film. It's Bruce trying to, because Robin or Blake already knows that Bruce is Batman. Like he has that that thing, and then the conversation that they have bet- between the two of them is just, you know, Bruce's. Bruce and um, Blake, they already know they they know their boundaries. Yeah. So I just feel that um, building Blake up to be Batman by the end of the film is great, mm-hmm. and the the whole Rob the, like his name's Robin. That's it's great. It's just you're building him up to be Batman, and then oh, his name's Robin. You know. So it kind of it's it's a little bit flippant, but I do I I, I liked his arc throughout the entire thing. Cause partly because I do enjoy Joseph Gordon-Levitt like a lot. Oh, I love Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He's, he's great. 
and uh, he did really well in this film, and it's, he's he's a great. Um, what's the Actor. success? Yeah, he's just oh a no, great no yeah to take on the mantle to take on of the mantle because he's Bruce just keeps telling him oh yeah Batman's a symbol, he can be anybody. It's just who will it be? And I feel like Blake's that that guy. I think this is the second best uh, portrayal of like Batman and Robin, like that kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. It's better than the one in like with Val Kilmer and Chris O'Donnell and yeah. Batman Forever, but like it's not as good as like Iron Man and Spider Man. Like in the new Spider Man movie, that I, that's all I could think of yeah. the whole time. I was like, "This is Batman and Robin, and it's perfect." And but yeah, this is also great. Um, it's less of that because like he's not really Robin because like that's just kind of a nod. But like he's um, he's because he's gonna be Batman. You mm-hmm. know, Batman's done. And now it's Joseph Gordon-Levitt's time, and um, that's that's all great. I love how they do that. I know it's like cheesy where they go like, "Oh, you should use your full name, Robin." Robin, yeah. But like you know, it's just a little nod in the end with him finding the Bat Caves. It's just beautiful, and um, oh yeah, that brings me to like um, the Alfred's uh, dream and stuff. Do you, do you like all that? I do because it's still with Christopher Nolan. I just feel that he brings that kind of the whole dream thing like it's not really as it seems and it kind of messes with reality to each of his films after um inception so seeing that and like having the whole fantasy thing i feel like is a good like psychological kind of twist yeah but it 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 works and i do enjoy i did enjoy the the whole fantasy his fantasy scene and because alfred's like he's a he's a great character and he's kind of like the one that we always go to like he's pretty much the audience Mm-hmm. in the films because he says oh but um bruce is getting ready to go back out and fight batman or not fight batman fight bane yeah he's saying you know you're gonna this is a serious you're gonna die you're, yeah. yeah like you're gonna get and you're not paying attention you're 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 letting your ego get to you and i feel like that's how i the first time i saw the movie i was like that's he's he's right because batman he doesn't he doesn't he's got he's just he's letting his ego get to him and he doesn't understand that bane is literally going to he can destroy batman and he breaks him you know yeah. so i just i love alfred and i just love how everyone has like their own arc like throughout the movies like the whole time alfred just wants you know bruce to be happy like eternally happy mm-hmm. and like now he is he's done being bad but he's moved on uh commissioner gordon has his like you know um where he's like oh like he's safe from the um harvey dent line yeah. he's like reborn now uh, John Blake realizes he doesn't want to be a cop. He wants to take on the mantle of the bat. What is it? Catwoman realizes, you know, oh, I'm not, the, you know, this aw- awful thief, you know? And, like, you know, it's just, it's well-written. Mm-hmm. All of his movies are so well-written. Yeah. And they got so many, so many great characters. Because there's, like, how many, like, characters are we dealing with here? Like, ten? There's, yeah, there's a lot. Like, oh. But it's so, they're so well-handled, and it's... It's it's just amazing. Mm. Um, another thing that I want to talk about, you just mentioned that uh, real quickly. You said um, the breaking the back scene. Oh um, yeah. The, how do you feel about that? Like, there's no music at all in that fight scene. Mm. Like, it's just quiet. And how do you how do you just feel? I feel because when you add the score to each scene, it's it's important. But when you don't have it, it's noticeable. So the crowd or the audience is like, okay, well, I have to pay attention because there's a yeah, reason. Yeah, because when was the last time you've ever seen a fight scene without music? Yeah, there, there's no score, no nothing. It's just the two characters going at it. And I feel like that it's one of my favorite scenes in the film because it shows that Bane is completely different from anything that Batman has gone up against. Yeah. And he does not, he doesn't know what he's getting into. And Bane's even said it like, oh, your victory's defeated you. Like, you're not you fight like a young man that sort of thing and he's he's literally breaking batman and batman just keeps trying and trying and trying and trying but then he just he immediately breaks him at the end and it's and he like is batman because like they both were like trained by the league of shadows and like they're they're equal on but i yeah. think i feel like bane is the but bane more... didn't stop for eight years to go be a hermit you know yeah 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 it's just they're bane is obviously more superior in strength and i feel like they're both equal in intellectually because they 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 just combat each other on all angles, and Bane had um, a plan throughout the entire thing. Like he, it seemed the whole John Daggett like subplot was that. Um, oh, the, John, like the business guys. Yeah, he brought um, which Ben Mendelsohn did a great job as John Daggett, and he brought Bane's mercenaries into what was it? They're for mining or whatever. Yeah. And um, Bane was just using, and in return, Bane would ask uh, Daggett for like the construction guys with the the uh the cement 
that he was lacing with the explosives so he can lay out his plan. And I feel like that's just incredibly smart. And, like, Bane had this whole plan, but he was just let other people think. Yeah, that, that they was just... That, yeah. And I just, yeah. I loved, I loved it. I think the breaking the back scene is the best scene in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's perfectly done. It hits you harder because there's no music, you yeah. know? It's, it's so depressing. I think it's beautifully shot. The whole movie's beautifully shot. Yeah. But yeah, like, that's such a, I feel like that's such an iconic scene that's going to go down. It's, like, one of the greatest, like, a montage of superhero movies. That's the scene that's going to be, like, one of the, it could be showcased, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but yeah, so what else do I have written here? Oh yeah, no, not a lot of Batman here in this movie. Uh, 46 minutes in is when we have the first, uh, sighting of Batman. Yeah. And, but when you're, he's there, like, you know, you mm-hmm. know, like they're so, he's having less presence, Batman yeah. makes you appreciate it so much more. Mm-hmm. Like it felt like Iron Man 3 and that like, um, you know, it was a more about Bruce Wayne than it was about Batman. It was more like Iron Man 3 is more about Tony Stark than it, it is, is about, about Iron, Iron Man. Man. Yeah. I know at the end there's like the flurry of Iron Man. Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, yeah so there's not a lot of Batman but like it's more enjoyable when he's here Mm -hmm. because you know you don't see him as often Um, oh how do you feel oh I love the football scene I wrote that I just wrote down football yeah because that's that was in the trailer right Mm -hmm. and he's running away and then he just looks back and he's like crap yeah (laughs) drops the ball yeah it's it's a great scene oh yeah Oh, uh, one thing that I um, remember about this movie and like the news was they were gonna have the Riddler be the bad guy initially uh, before Bane, mm-hmm. and it was gonna be Johnny Depp. Yeah, I do. I how do, do you, how do you feel about that? Ah, uh, I'm glad they didn't go that route because I feel like it wouldn't have wow, been. Wow, really? I feel like it wouldn't have been as big as it could have been because I don't know much about the Riddler. I don't remember much from like the older films or Jim anything. Carey, yeah, like yeah. Jim Carrey. I can't. I don't remember much, but. Um, I feel like that wouldn't have been as grand as this. It wouldn't have been like a perfect. Oh, I don't want that. Instead, I'm just saying, like, if I, in an alternate universe where I could have another Batman movie, yeah, I would love to the see Riddler. Christopher Nolan do the Riddler. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it'd be good. It's just like you said. It's instead of, I just I prefer. And like I know yeah. people don't like Johnny Depp now, but he'd have been great. Yeah, four <laughs> years or what was it? 2012. Yeah, it was different times. Different times. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we talked about Bane's death. Just the ending in general, um, how do you feel about it? Like, I know me personally, I watch this ending all the time. Like, mm-hmm. if, if I'm just, like, if I have, like, five minutes before I have to leave, I go on iTunes. It's one movie so I have on iTunes. And I just watch the ending because mm-hmm. I love it so much. How do you feel? Like, how do you feel like they, about them ending off this series like this? It's a great ending, and it doesn't, it didn't, um, it doesn't affect me as much as for you. Yeah. But I do. Oh, I cry like respect. a baby. Yeah, it's, it's a great ending to the trilogy it's just it's not as um impactful for me but i do respect it and appreciate it because it's it's perfect i I can't picture christopher nolan ending it any other way and yeah it's just it's it's perfectly woven in and you get whatever ending you want but the same thing with like inception like if you want batman to be dead yeah you can believe that batman's dead and that Mm -hmm. that alfred's dream was just a dream and you know batman's dead or, like, you can, like, as it is, like, you can believe that he's alive. Like, um, and I know that's a problem with a lot of people. They're always like, oh, well, I don't like that, like, um, you know, he's de- he should be dead. There was no autopilot, like, you know. But then it kind of, like, backs up the fact that he's alive, but the end with everything, like, we were talking about this before. With yeah, the majesty the autopilot of being, Yeah, the autopilot being fixed, the bat signal being fixed, the pearls yeah. being gone missing that Selena's wearing at the end. Yeah, it's, it's like just, when, There's uh, just too much to call it. Yeah. Oh, Batman's dead, you know? Yeah. That's just me. That's me. It's like when Gordon's, like, you know, talking to Batman on the roof, and he's, like, he, like, turns away, gets distracted, and then, like, Batman's gone. Yeah. Like, all these things, like, how does Batman get back to the city? How does he do all these things? It's because he's Batman, you know? Like, it kind of, you just have to joke, suspend but, like, belief, yeah. But, like, that's part of the character. And I, I love it. I think it's great. Um, we talk about this, we uh, how, like, they... They always do, like, two villains in these movies, I noticed. Uh-huh. They kind of had, like, uh, Killian Murphy, what was it, the Scarecrow, show up again, which I love him. Yeah. That's great. Um, they always handle two villains very well. Like, they always kill one, though. You notice that? Yeah. It's like Ra's al Ghul, Harvey Dent, and then Bane. Because I feel like it's mainly about one, yeah. one villain, and that's the central struggle because it's usually, like, good and evil, and there's not, like, multiple evils. It's just the one. So I feel that... Um, it, it, they do handle multiple villains very well. Other films have not. That we, I think we were talking about this earlier. Oh, the Spider- Amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man, yeah. Amazing Spider-Man, yeah. And it's just... Two. If you handle it the right way and we're, to where it doesn't become so much, 
it can be good with multiple villains. Or you can do Spider Man three and just and, it's awful. Uh, it's awful. <laughs> I love Spider Man three. That's a, a, movie, a video for another time. Yeah. But uh, villains, they just can't juggle it's, them at all. Yeah, no, it's stressful. But yeah, um, but yeah, so that's basically that's that's all I have uh, written down here. But I, besides, like the opening plane scene, just like the Joker's um, bank robbing scene, mm-hmm. great opening. Yeah, I love it. Just everything about this movie, I feel it's like it's, I know it's, it's not perfect. Yeah, it's not by any means, but what film you know is made perfectly, you know? Oh, it's well, it's perfectly made like on a filmmaking level. Mm. The story, yeah, has got some problems with it. It's a great way to end off the franchise. Everyone's at the top of their game. Um, oh, oh, here's another question I remember wanted to ask you. Uh, this came out in the same summer as the Avengers did, uh, and a lot of people were debating hardcore which one's the better movie, and I think that's like. What's better, The Lion King or The Godfather? You know, like, you can't mm. compare the two. But if you had to, like, which one do you like more? Dark Knight Rises, for sure. Really? Yes. Because like, 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 100%. Definitively, if, we, if I had three hours to kill, yeah. and, my, and we were watching a movie, like, oh, you want to watch The Avengers or The Dark Knight Rises? I'd choose Dark Knight Rises. I'm going to disagree. Again. I'd go with Avengers. That's the movie that got me into movies. It's an easier watch because it's fun and yeah. shorter. It's just... Uh, it's uh, so much, like... I don't know. It's just. I think it's a better movie. I think it's a better movie too. Yeah, honestly, I, I just feel that my tastes. I like. I do enjoy the fun aspects of like the Avengers and stuff. It's just I prefer having more like subplots and stuff yeah. that makes you think. Because I like going to the movies and seeing all the fun, like all the explosions and fight sequences and stuff. But I also like having like a good plot. So I feel like yeah. um, not that the Avengers is lacking at all. It's not. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. a good. It's a good film. It's, just, it's great. It's great. It's, it's great. great. It's just I. I'd prefer The Dark Knight Rises because there's just yeah. there's so much there. Oh yeah, there's just so much there. I I, I like f- like fun movies like rewatchability wise. Like I can rewatch The Dark Knight Rises all the time. Yeah, but like that's the exception. Like with like because it's like more of a serious movie. Mm-hmm. Like The Avengers, I could literally anytime turn it on. I love fun like the more fun movies is one that I'm gonna go back and watch more. Mm. You know what I mean? And so I I go with The Avengers, but I'm biased. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um. Oh, so uh, but yeah, pretty much. Uh, any final thoughts? Not that I can think. I do have one favorite scene that I've consistently watched. Like it's about five minutes long. It's the scene where he's talking, where Bane's giving the speech in front of Blackgate, and I told you it's one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie. And I just with the score because I I'm a big fan of like movie scores and how they lend to the um, making the audience feel for the the scene. Oh, the score's great. Yeah, yeah. it's just that whole scene of. Um, Bane laying out his plan for not just Batman but for ev- the whole world to see or the whole city it's it's a great scene and it's one of my favorite in the entire film I think it may be my favorite scene yeah alright so uh, give me a out of five um, number here um, I, I go out of five I know a lot of people go out of ten yeah but yeah so uh, I'd go I'd go five out of five obviously I love it yeah like so but yeah what do you, what do you think though I think I, th- I think a five would Anything less than that, I, I feel like, is just pointing out the only the flaw and not paying attention to everything else. Because you have to think, like we said earlier, that this isn't exactly the film that they had in mind, but it's what they made, and they made the best film that they could have with what they were given. And I, I, just, I love it for that so much more. Yeah, yeah the, the good overwhelmingly outweighs the bad. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, it's, and it's one of my favorite superhero movies. Would you put it in, like, in your, like, top ten superhero movies of all time? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Top five? Uh, yeah, probably. Oh, really? Like wow. Logan is definitely number one. Really? Wow, I Logan. have to talk about so. That's another... Oh, uh, well, well, yeah, we'll I, talk about Logan. That's, I just... Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's definitely top five, for sure. All right, so, yeah, so both five out of fives... Um, that's pretty much what we think about uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, if you guys have any opinions, uh, comment that uh, below. If you enjoyed the longer, this is 33 minutes Damn. long. So, um, yeah, let us know. If you're even watching at this point, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let us know what you think about uh, having guests on. Uh, thanks for coming on the our little show here, Jordan. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was a good time. And, um, yeah, uh, I'll see you guys next time i don't know what i'm gonna watch but i probably i'll probably talk about the lion king i saw that recently yeah i'll I'll, I'll probably do one on that because i love that but yeah so um thanks for watching